Well, a reward for getting to the end of Leviticus is to uh, head into Hebrews now. And uh, this book so helpfully uh, um, takes us through so many of those uh, old covenant um, priestly rituals and so on, and helps us to see very directly the links to Jesus. Uh, and so um, we trust that God will help us to um, really benefit from this uh, letter uh, to the Hebrews in the coming days. We're in chapter two today. Uh, so let's read and hear God's word together. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according uh, to his will. Let's just pause there, the, that we must uh, pay the most careful attention. Therefore, what's the therefore? Uh, well, it's speaking about um, chapter one and uh, how um, uh, God has formerly spoken through the prophets and in various means, uh, but now he's spoken through his son. Uh, the son is the climax of God's uh, revelation. Uh, and if that's the case, then we need to be uh, looking uh, to listen very carefully uh, to the son. Um, the son is superior to the angels, chapter one has made very clear. Um, and, and therefore, uh, we need to listen carefully to Jesus. Um, and the danger is that we drift away from that. Uh, when we first come to faith, or perhaps when we first come into contact with Christian theology, we're intrigued, we're excited, uh, we're engaging, uh, and then it becomes familiar and we drift from it and we look to other things. Um, and we need to remind ourselves that there is nothing greater than the sun. Uh, there is no greater excitement or thrill uh, or um, uh, weight of authority or truth found anywhere else uh, above Jesus. And uh, therefore, we must guard ourselves um, from drifting away. Uh, so that's that's the uh, the challenge of these opening verses concluding uh, chapter one's arguments. Um, if we ignore this salvation, there is no escape uh, from God's judgment because this is the salvation that God has provided. Let's carry on reading verse five. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? A son of man that you care for him. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crown them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. And putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your names to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful, a high priest, faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, He's able to help those who are being tempted. The rest of the argument uh, shifts now. Um, I, I guess uh, the danger for some of the, the readers of the letter in the, uh, when it was first sent was that they were getting uh, drawn into talking about angels and the excitement about uh, that. Um, and uh, the writer has said that Jesus is greater than the angels, so don't get distracted by them. Fix your eyes on Jesus. But then he, then he broadens that out and, and talks about our destiny as, as human beings. Um, and uh, it says it's not it's not the angels that are going to rule the world to come, uh, but it's it's mankind. Yeah, everything's going to be under under our feet, um, and um, we have that destiny if we're in Christ. That's part of the salvation um, that we have been uh, drawn into by God's grace. Um, and uh, this, I guess, in, in many ways, taps into so much of the guff that we see. In the Disney films and uh, after the athletics and everything else, all these strap lines like everyone can be a winner and uh, you can be what you dream to be, that there is a sense in all human beings that there is more to life 
than what I'm experiencing at the moment. There, there is greater meaning, there is greater purpose and fulfillment that, that somehow we have we have fallen below what we were made for and, and we're longing to strive for it. Some of us have given up. We just feel as though we're never going to get there. Some of us are still working really hard to fulfill our dreams. And, and, and the writer of the Hebrews is saying that the problem with all of that is, is, is that's that's not, not how you get there. It, it's found in Jesus. It's Jesus who um, uh, has come into this world, lowered himself than the angels, uh, suffered death uh, on behalf of all who would believe in him. Um, and then he, he, as he's raised, brings uh, humanity to glory. Um, and so it's, it's in him. Uh, that we we see our future. We don't we don't see the world subject to us at the moment. Actually, that's the constant frustration is we we never do seem to get there, um, and that's because of the sinfulness of human beings. That's that's part of the mess we've made. Uh, we, so we don't see everything subject to human beings that, that we'd long for, uh, whether that's in terms of getting on top of the the, the, the climate problems or getting on to, and on top of the the, the, the the ethnic divides or the the, the the national problems or the the class difference or the north south all those issues that are existing that we want to see progress on we we don't see mankind get, getting all this in order and sorting out and we won't but what we do see is jesus and made a little lower than the angels now crowned with glory and honor he, he's paved the route and it's in him that we'll find those things says the writer to the the hebrews um, and uh, the amazing thing then is that, that Jesus left glory, took on flesh and blood, because that's what we are, um, and suffered um, so that we might, um, uh, well, so that he might be made perfect. The pioneer of our salvation was made perfect through what he suffered. And then through his suffering, he's able to make us uh, perfect too. Uh, and so we, we can look, lift our eyes and look to him and see what our destiny will be if we're trusting in him. We will be raised and we will be glorified and we'll be part of a world where all those things that we're, we're sensing should be in place will be. But the great news is that actually not only has Jesus blazed the trail and gone and made that possible, but actually because he himself suffered when he was tempted, because he's walked in this world with all its disappointments and with all our failures and the, the battles that we face, actually he's able to help us in our temptation. So not only will he deliver the dreams that we have of, of what humanity ought to be, um, not only is he paved the way for us to be lifted to to be co-regents with god as, as god has designed us to be his representatives ruling his creation he also knows what it's like to be in the mess that we're in um, and he's able to help us uh, in that um, he uh, is able to help those who are being tempted uh, helping us to resist sin helping us to walk a godly uh, path so what, what a great savior uh, what a wonderful encouragement not to drift uh, but to come back to jesus and to submit to him and to look to him knowing and what he will deliver in the future and knowing how he can help now so let's pray shall we father forgive us when we are distracted by all manner of uh, new uh, fads and, and, and fantasies all manner of uh, spiritual uh, intrigue um, whether that's angels or anything else uh, father help us to uh, realize just how good we've got it in jesus and uh, father we pray that you would help us to see with fresh eyes just what he's done for us we thank you that he's now uh, in glory he's been raised He's now crying with glory and honour. We thank you that in um, coming to this earth and suffering uh, on our behalf, uh, he, um, uh, in taking on flesh and blood, has come to rescue flesh and blood and lift them to glory. Uh, we thank you that all those things that you made us for in the beginning as your made in, as made in your image, uh, made as your um, uh, uh, regents on earth, those who, to reign in your, in your stead um, uh, under, your, under your leadership. Uh, we thank you that all that's coming back because of what Jesus has done. But in the meantime, with all the frustrations, with all the battles, with all the failures and the difficulties, we thank you that Jesus gets it. He understands what we're going through. And Father, we pray then that as we realise just how wonderful Jesus is, he's, he's conquered and, and, and he's raised and he's crying with glory and honour and he's taking us there as well. But also he's got all the tenderness and all the sympathy and all the kindness and all the, the resources to help us in the current battle. Father, why would we go anywhere else? Help us to turn to Jesus today again and again and again. And we ask this in his name. Amen.